Okay, so yesterday we talked about making the cartouche for our sarcophagus. Um, and what you probably want to do is go ahead and finish that up today. You want to make sure it's got a border around the edge because that represents um, a rope or a never-ending circle. Um, you can add some of the symbols that we talked about yesterday that are on some of these handouts. Um, you could add those to the top. I've got a scarab beetle at the bottom. And make sure you get your initials and hieroglyphics. All of that gets colored. And then on the other side, we're going to create the, or what would be called the death mask. Um, to draw this, again, we want everything to be just the right size for our sarcophagus um, that we're going to make in a few days. So I have another template for us to use. And this is just so we don't get the head too big. We don't get it too small. And so we can get some of the facial features in the right place. Um, so everybody will get one of these. Um, We've got the outline of the head. We've got a little, a couple of little lines to show where the neck would be. And then I've given you some little markers right here in the middle um, with these arrows pointing to it. That's where our eyes are going to be. That's about the size you need to make them. And we'll talk about drawing those in a minute. Um, inside this dotted line is where your nose will be. It's actually going to touch this bottom part right here. And it's going to come from this side of, or from this dotted line to this dotted line. Your mouth will need to fit in this dotted um, rectangle right here below. And then I've marked where your ears go. They start right here at this line, and they come all the way down to this line. So to do this, what you will do is you'll place it on the opposite side um, underneath your paper from your cartouche. And it's fairly dark, and I know it might be hard to see on camera, but in person um, it's pretty easy to see through the paper and see the dark lines. So really lightly with your pencil, you just want to trace the shape of the head very lightly. You can go ahead and trace about where the neck is going to be, and then you can start putting in the facial features. So like I said, you've got a little mark at the very top for where your eyes need to go. Um, eyes are shaped a little bit like footballs or almonds. Um, Maybe sometimes people say they look like a little bit like a lemon, but it's a curved line at the top and a curved line at the bottom, and they go right in between those little markers that I've given you. Um, inside your eye, you have two circles. You've got what's called our iris, which is the colored part of our eyes, and then you've got a pupil, and your pupil is the black part, and a lot of times when we fill that in, we leave just a little bit of a white speck because it gives it a little bit of a reflection and makes it look like a realistic eye. So you've got those two circles inside. You've got a little eyelid up over the top. Um, and then up above, you've got eyebrows. And the Egyptians, um, uh, they wore, especially a pharaoh or a queen, um, would wear um, a lot of eye makeup. They would have like a thick line around their eye. Like I said, even the pharaohs, even the men, because this was a symbol of power, and it was a symbol of wealth. Not everybody could afford um, to have the eyeliner or to have what they used um, to create it. And so that was a real big symbol of being powerful and being a pharaoh or a queen. Same thing with their eyebrows. That You're often on Egyptian art and um, drawings of some of the Egyptian people. You're going to see a really big, thick eyebrow. And those are just going to go right above... the eye like this. Um, for your nose, like I said, you can kind of see where it's dotted in. Um, it is going to rest on the very bottom um, where the lines for the nose and the mouth meet, so right about here. An easy way to make a nose is just to make a little curve right in the middle and then make a little hook on each side just like that. If you want to go back and do a line kind of towards the top, want to change it up a little bit, that's up to you personally. Um, your mouth needs to fit inside this bottom rectangle right here. Um, it doesn't have to be as big as that rectangle, but it needs to be inside that rectangle. Um, if you are a guy and you want this to look a little bit more masculine, um, you can... 
usually what I say is draw the middle part of the mouth first. And again, you can look at some of the pictures. It kind of dips down. And then do just a little bit of an upper lip and a little bit of a lower lip like that. And don't connect the edges. That usually helps this look a little bit more um, masculine, if that's how you would like for it to look. Um, if you are doing a queen and you want it to look a little bit more feminine, then you can obviously kind of make her lips a little pointier and you can kind of close the edges up and kind of help that look a little bit more like um, a little bit more feminine, okay? Um, ears on the side, they are just a tiny bump right there by the eye and again, you've got some little marks to help you know where to put them and they just stay very close to the head and then they hook back on both sides. After you've got the basics, again, you can kind of start looking at some of these examples. Um, I've got realistic ones on um, one sheet. I've got some that are line drawings on the other. And you can see that they're headdresses. Um, we've got all different, you know, types and styles um, on mine that I finished earlier. Um, I've got a headdress um, a lot like, this is an image of Queen Tut's mother that they talked about in the video the other day. So I drew something. Um, that was similar to what she wore. It's completely up to you. Um, if you are doing, um, let's see, let's do, since I've already got a queen, let's do something that looks more like a pharaoh maybe. Um, usually their headdress is going to come down across their forehead and it's usually got some kind of a band that will rest on that. Um, let's see, we'll do one that is looking a little bit like this right here is what I'm looking at. It's got some curves on the side that come up. Now, how large this is, how much paper it takes up, that's all entirely up to you. But you can just look at the pictures. And really, there are no rules with this. You can kind of create your own style, um, create what you think you want your um, sarcophagus to look like. But it goes a little something like this. The headdress is usually dropped below the shoulder. So there's going to be some type of collar down at the bottom. Um, typically, especially you can kind of see right through here on this example, um, those are going to be decorative. Those are going to have all kinds of like jewels and gold and things like that. Um, if you want to go back to the headdress and you want to add some of those symbols up to the top, a lot of times we see like a serpent or a cobra or you could use one of the beetles, or you could see the all-seeing eye. Any of that stuff that appeals to you, you're totally welcome to add it. Um, jewelry, you know, even male or female, doesn't really matter. Um, whatever you would like to do. Um, once everything is drawn, you are going to outline it all in Sharpie. Make sure you do your eyeliner and your eyebrows in Sharpie because you want those really dark because, again, that's a sign of very powerful uh, pharaoh or queen. Um, and then I'm going to set the markers and crayons back out. Um, I would suggest that you use crayons for skin tone because you have more choices. You don't have a lot of choices with marker. Um, so I would suggest that you use crayons. And then for everything else, you can just kind of go back and forth um, uh, between, you know, a crayon or a marker. And one last thing. When we first traced um, with our template, and we trace the outline of the head. See this line right here that is the top of the head? Once you add the headdress, you don't need that line anymore because it is covered. You cannot see it. Okay, so you need to make sure you erase that line and you don't go through.